In the middleweight division, Jordan Keepers and Rick Rufus. Let's find out more about them and go to our ring announcer, Mike Marino. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for six rounds and is in the middleweight division. Introducing first in the blue corner, weighing in at 171 pounds, with a kickboxing record of eight wins and three losses from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jordan Keepers. in the red corner weighing in this afternoon at 164 pounds with a record of 15 wins no losses and six wins by knockout from milwaukee wisconsin the pkc united states light middleweight champion rick the jet rufus hey brad you know what i like about rick you see what he did when he walked into the ring he went all around the ring and he went and have a, a nice little look Keepers, the rules. And, and he says, I'm going to get you. Take your kicks well, up. I love that. They're having they're a good look right, right now, too. Too. You will have two warnings, and then you will be penalized. Is there any questions? Let's have a good fight, man. Let's go. That's a tremendous look, and they still haven't backed away. Rick the Jet Rufus and Jordan Keepers. Six rounds or less. <laughs> you know what that reminds me? The two guys in front is one Joe was looking at me this afternoon. <laughs> I thought we were going to have trouble in the hotel lobby between you two. Keepers is put together pretty well. 171. Jordan. Very well built, Brad. Very well built. Uh, each other. Bow. Ready. Bobby Arnell, our third man in the ring. And there's the bell. We're underway round one. Well, we've said this many times that Rick Rufus started in this sport when he was five years old. Now get him up. He's now 20 years old. He has a lot of experience for a 20-year-old. Unbeaten and is the U.S. light middleweight champion. And if you've never seen Rick Rufus, this might be your first time seeing him in action. Watch the balance and the footwork of this guy. He will amaze you. He is the superstar of this sport of the future. It is the Rick Rufuses of the world who will take over for the Johnny Terrios when they move on. Right. Wipe him off. 15 years experience at 20 years old. Amazing. He's so quick. He's got the best defensive footwork in the sport. It's not a question of hitting him solid. It's a question of just touching his body. That's the hard part. See, you don't know which way he's going. They collided heads then, hope there was no cut. Don't see a cut. Don't see any blood or cut, so that butt goes without any problem. If you watch the way Rufus keeps his upper body as he throws his kicks, his his upper body stays completely straight. Now you notice like uh, keepers then throws a kick, body leans back. Watch Rufus, body stays straight. Good series of kicks. Kept keepers honest anyway. Another hit collision then. Both guys felt it. Rufus tried to step in uh, to throw the straight left and their heads just collided. Every kind of kick you can imagine. Axe kicks, in, inverted axe kicks, spinning heel kicks. And those things are over six feet off the floor. And again, his upper body remains erect, as Joe was talking about. Final seconds, round one. You know, Brad, what I like about Rufus. Rick the Jet Rufus and Jordan Keepers. And we've got one round in. This guy, Joe, between you and I, this guy is, is, is unbelievable. I mean, did you see what he was doing? I mean... Keeper's trying to get him, he's moving around. He's moving around all the time. So, I mean, to me, for an opponent trying to reach the other guy, his body, as far as kick is concerned, has to be tough because he's so quick. So elusive, extremely elusive. The guy never hit you, okay? The guy never hit you. The same thing you kick at the point, you keep going that way. You come back on the right hook, uppercut, okay? If we are ready for him on the right uppercut, a little more water. Come on, let's see it. Pick up the pace. We're into round two. Rick Rufus in the red pants. The right of your screen and Jordan Keepers. 
black pants with the bright color piping. And Rufus puts a good combination of kicks together here early in round two. Two kicks to the body. The next one comes back to the head, as Brad said. Upper body is completely straight. Now, those kicks that, that Keepers is missing are the things that will get him in trouble because he'll step in deeper, and when he does, he'll run into a straight left hand from Rick Rufus. Keeper's not a slow fighter by any means, but just shows you how much quicker Rick Rufus is. Keeper's, though, good overhand right. Rufus a little bit of trouble on the ropes. He's going to have to get out of there. And he fights and kicks his way out. There's a good right hand by Keepers again. A nice uppercut. So people want to know what kind of jaw Rick Rufus has. He just took a solid shot on the cheek there. Keepers is strong. Saw that same kind of clashing between Rick Rufus and Larry McFadden in Atlanta. Rick Rufus dropped Larry McFadden. And Rick Rufus with the mouse under the left eye, swelling under the left eye as he took a mean overhand right shot from Keepers who comes right at him here in the neutral corner. That seemed to have given Keepers a little more uh, confidence, Corner. I have to say yes. After the, uh, the two good uh, punts that he gives to Rick, I think this guy is coming back. You know, he's built. He's, he looks like a strong guy to me, 175 pounds. I mean, but, you know, Rick Rufus is, you know, he's, he's got to come back. But, you know, when you hit a, a champion like that, it's got to give him confidence. That's a slip. And we're down to the final 10 seconds here of round two. And Rick Rufus again with an abrasion under his left eye. We'll continue to follow that for you. Round three and a lot more action from Ryan coming up right after this. And Jordan Keepers and Joe Corley, I sent some concern in Rick Rufus' corner between rounds, and maybe rightly so. Huh? Well, I would have thought they would have put some ice on his uh, cheek over there, but they didn't seem to be that concerned about it, and it doesn't seem to be getting any worse. No more swelling than it was uh, last round. But he took a very powerful shot, very powerful wide right hand, like that one that Keepers just missed with up against the ropes. This is a great tune-up fight for Rufus, if you can call it a tune-up fight at this point, because against Moncayo, he's going to be putting up with this kind of pressure. We warned you in the opening of tonight's show that tune-ups can sometimes not end up being tune-ups, but upsets in the other direction. That's what Keepers has in mind. But, of course, Rick Rufus, a solid fighter who has all the skills offensively and defensively, and though he does have swelling under the left eye, he knows what he's about, and he looks fresh out there. Rufus uh, has started to pick his shots a lot more carefully now. That is giving uh, Keepers trouble, and the last round took a lot out of Keepers. Look how heavy his legs are. Keepers is having trouble getting in there, really, and throwing anything. His kicks don't have it now. Keepers don't. I think Keepers looks tired to me a little bit. No question. Both fighters shake their head after exchanging blows there. Trying to let the other know that it didn't bother them, and sometimes it's just the opposite. Nice lead right hand by Rupert. That was the quick hand speed. Look at the way he mixes him up. Left hand down the middle into a short right again, right underneath the eye that's already swelling on it. Where that heel just landed on Keeper's right bicep will be extremely sore tomorrow. Round three, final seconds. I, right now, Joe, maybe I'm wrong, but you, you let me know because you got more experience than me. I think that Keeper looks to me that his punch is not as strong as it was before or even his kick. Not nearly as strong. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Professional Karate Commission, Gary Folk's commissioner. In addition to sanctioning professional karate and kickboxing events, the PKC offers membership to supporting fans around the country. If you're a regular fan of Contact Karate, a fighter who's looking for membership, or maybe a promoter who seeks the sanction of the PKC, write the Professional Karate Commission, 135 Sugar Street, Canal Fulton, Ohio, 44614. Again, that's the PKC, 135 Sugar Street, Canal Fulton, Ohio, 44614. Now we're in between rounds here between Rick Rufus and Jordan Keepers. And Rick Rufus maybe has had a little bit more action than he was bargaining for from that young man. Joe, you got one of your friends on the ringside tonight. 
they just drove from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was supposed to be your opponent at one time. <laughs> I'll give you his name later on. My friend, uh, Paul Block. Boy, has he got his work cut out for him over there look, looking after you guys. <laughs> Fourth round. Rick Rufus with its jump spin kick. It's just missed. There's a good right hand. Nice shot to the body by Rufus. And again, he continues to circle. Good footwork. And now he backs up keepers with that combination. The front kick again backs keepers away. And Rufus going to work on offense this round. Look at the kicks. Looks like Barishnikov out there. Rufus, one of the rising stars, if not one of the top stars in full contact karate today. Only 20 years of age. A black belt for a long time. He's been in the sport 15 years, and it shows. Keepers is just thinking, if he'll stand still long enough for me to unload on him, I'll just take him out. And he just keeps waiting for the shot, and Rufus is not going to give him that shot unless it's by accident. Look at the keeper's kick, so heavy. Nice round kick by Rufus there. Keeper's not only tired now, but frustrated, Boom Boom. I have to say yes. You know, you, you fight a guy like Rufus, he's all over the ring. You know, he's so quick and so fast. And it, like Drew was saying before, he's winning for his shot now. Yeah. Keeper's, you know, you, you look at his kick, it looks like a 250 pounds kick. <laughs> you know, it's so heavy to get out. But look at Rufus. Rufus, the left round kick, and then a solid left jab, and there's a right hand. And Rick Rufus seems to be starting to put it together. He started a bit slow. He's coming on strong now, and he has taken command, it appears, here in round four. We've got more action coming up from Rockford after these words. Roddy Mantia just around the corner. Right around the corner. Of course, with Jim there is uh, Haywood Jeffries, number one first round draft pick, and John Suttle. Number three round draft pick for the NFL that Jim's representing now. We'll talk to uh, talk to them in a little while, see what they think of the fight so far. We are in round five, scheduled for six, and Rick Rufus in round four really started to put it together. Jordan Keeper's tired a bit, and Rufus got in a groove. And I think the mouthpiece went on that one. It did. Keep it in. Bob Yarn, now our referee the mouthpiece back to keepers and Rufus on the attack and boy had that one landed I don't know they might have picked keepers up from the next county somewhere I love to see those kicks of Ricks in slow motion like that where he does those things I mean the athletic skill required there is almost as great as that required by bone pressure Smith to hold on to Mike Tyson <laughs> for 12 rounds look at Rufus now he's putting it all together oh a great spinning back fist right on the right temple and keeper said no nope, didn't bother me but I doubt that's the case says it didn't bother me I just can't get my legs to do what I want him to do Rick Rufus constant motion here fifth round he has controlled the fight though keepers maybe has won one round I'm only guessing Joe you're keeping score over there yeah, I don't. Uh, I haven't had uh, keepers uh, winning around yet. I've uh, well, I'll take that back. I had him winning the second round by half a point. That was the one where he landed that solid. Down goes keepers, and he's got a smile on his face. Rick Rufus to the neutral corner. Well, that's what I said earlier. Rick was going to bring him in and then nail him with that straight left, and it took him this long to do it, but he got him. He got him in. Now well, let's see if Rufus goes in for the kill. It appears that's going to be the case. Rufus, spinning heel kick. Keepers is hurt. Uppercut. A great one. Overhand left. Rufus with keepers in trouble. And there's the bell. And the crowd is going wild. In fact, on their feet at the Metro Center. And Rufus now is having some fun. Keepers with blood on the mouthpiece, as you can see. Without a doubt, days here in between round five and round six. Let's take a look at it, gentlemen. This is uh, poetry in motion from a fighter's point of view. Rick Rufus is picking all his shots. Look how he mixes them up. Gets him coming in. Didn't even have his full power behind that. Probably didn't hurt keepers all that much, but uh, he didn't like being down there, and he didn't like getting up. 
but the rest of the things that Rick Rufus does are just unbelievable. Look at this. Off the right leg, springs off the right leg. Look how high the left comes, taking the left kick, spinning with the right kick. Keeper's just not quite sure what to get out of the way of there, Boomer. Joe, let me ask you a question. Don't you think right now, between you and I, you should stop that fight? Because I don't think that keepers should keep going. No, he has a minute to rest there. Now, at the end of that minute, the uh, referee didn't think that keepers was together. He, he could and should stop it. But keepers has got himself back together. It's just he's, he's outclassed. He's outmanned. Rick Rufus. In the sixth and final round has controlled this fight since round two. That's the only one we all gave keepers. And maybe he didn't even win that. We're not the official judges by any means. I should point out, I think the kick judge is being very uh, merciful to uh, keepers. He's giving him kicks for, uh, uh, counting kicks for all those uh, so-called attempts that keepers is making. But I, those are very half-hearted attempts to land, I believe. I'm still watching the sixth and final round and thinking about that kick Rufus performed in the last round and the great camera work and the work by the gang and the truck. Boy, that was pretty. <laughs> Didn't quite connect on keepers, but as Joe said, keepers had no clue where Rufus was coming from with that one. I'm on the, is. I think that, that uh, he was flying like a nun. Boy. At least seven <laughs> feet in the air. There's a pretty good left hook by keepers. Rufus just continues to circle to his right. The jet from Milwaukee. Look at the movement on defense. his horse here hasn't thrown a lot of punches knowing full well he's in command of the fight good uppercut a nice body shot with a right hand and again keeper shakes his head as if to say he was not stunned by any of those you know brad i don't blame wolf is doing what he's doing i mean he's got a why should he take a a blow and lo a, a lucky shot and knock him down this is the seventh round is coming to a close as well. Sixth round, I'm sorry. Fight is over. Rick Rufus and Jordan Keepers, a couple of Milwaukee, Wisconsin natives who here in Rockford, Illinois, have put on a good show. Rick Rufus, without a doubt, has had the better of it. And we, of course, will have to wait for the official word, but Jordan Keepers probably will suffer his fourth loss against eight wins on his PKC professional career. We'll find out. We'll have the official decision on whether or not Rick Rufus goes to 16-0. and 0. We'll let you know after we come back. Decision and go to our ring announcer, Mike Marino. Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Keeney scores the bout 60-53. Judge Wagner scores the bout 60-53.5. And Judge Johnson scores the bout 60-53.5. Your winner, by unanimous decision, Rick the Jet Rufus. So Rick Rufus, by unanimous decision, goes to 16-0. The fighters embrace in center ring. Rick, marvelous as always. And he's with our Joe Corley in the ring. Joe. Rick, I don't guess if you could have picked uh, the kind of tune-up fight you needed for John Moncayo, you could have picked a better opponent than Jordan Keeper. Yeah, Jordan came to me what I expected. Um, you know, he's from Milwaukee. I'm the U.S. champ. And, uh, you know, he had everything to gain to have a uh, good showing against me. But he helped me uh, warm up for the big one for the kick world title against John McKyle. Well, you got a, a little swelling here on your cheek. Looked like a fairly solid uh, right hand he caught you with. Yeah, he did, but uh, he didn't phase me at all. Those are things I need to work on in the gym. Uh, overhand right, be able to block and counter. Do they tell you in the corner not to stand and punch it out with him? Uh, that's exactly so. Uh, we didn't want to get in the habit of uh, standing here and duking to, for the upcoming fight against John Moncayo. Now let's talk about Moncayo just for a quick second. He's got a lot, a lot of fights. He's got more than 65 fights. Uh, you're going to go in against him now at 16-0. and 0. Do you think the experience will make any difference at all to you there? Uh, no, it's a matter of uh, who's got more heart and who wants the title and who wants to keep on to it. Because I'm there, John, and I want that title. That's my dream. Okay, Rick, let's take a quick look at the uh, at uh, some of the uh, knockdown footage. Um, uh, see if we can get to the uh, monitor here. Take a quick look at it. No, I can't see the monitor. Uh, but, uh, yep, there we go. 
That was the uh, straight left hand, Rick. He came in. Now, is, is it true you tried to suck him in? Then, uh, you know, as you move away, try to bring him in so you can hit him with the straight left? Yeah, I tried to start off keeping my distance and then eventually work the uh, closing the distance by kick punch him. Surprise attacks is the name of the game. So John Moncayo and Rick Rufus uh, getting ready now for Karate Mania April 25th in the Omni. Good luck to you, young man. Thank you. And let's go down to ringside now with Brad Nessler. All right, Joe, thank you very much. And down with me here at ringside, Glenn Keeney, the international liaison for the Professional Karate Commission. Glenn, it's guys like Rick the Jet Rufus who have really made this sport take off over the course of about the last year. You've been in your position for about a year, and the sport's really grown, hasn't it? Yes, it really has. We've had a great year uh, in the beginning trying to build a commission in a sport. Uh, you have to fill a lot of key positions, and we've been able to do that. And because we've been able to do that, I think we've attracted the top promoters. If you put the top promoters with the top athletes, and we're going to have the best fans, and we're going to make this thing go. These are some of the best fans here in Rockford. Of course, the hometown of Brad Hefton. Uh, they have seen Rick the Jet Rufus already victorious. Jerry Trimble, some of the other big names, Jerry Rome, and all the rest. And a lot of those guys are going to get together in Karate Mini. That's your next big event. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a great show. Uh, last year, it was the greatest show we ever had in karate with the top promoter, and he's going to do it again. I know him, and I know he will. Glenn, tremendous job on uh, one year, and I hope to see many, many more. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, sir. Glenn Keeney with us here at ringside. Karate Mini, of course, is coming up at the Omni in Atlanta, April.